Ah, here we go. But I really like this chapter. Pretty cool chapter. And I'll do my best to try to. I need to zoom that. I think this, I'm, we moved the camera. Somebody used the camera to, to, to take the video of them on the board. It looks like they kind of. There's a way to make it focus on me, and I don't know how to do that. Let's try that. Oh, that was not it. Okay. But well, at least we want to see the board, be able to see the board on the part. Okay. That's probably that's that's probably good enough. All right. So here we go. Blood. My one here, and make sure I've got my sheet here. Make sure I hit all the questions. We're probably not gonna get to all of them. Now. Okay, that's okay, but I mean that's okay. That way, at least now that's okay because y'all gonna see this. You'll see this, and that'll stay like that. But at least that what it's doing is staying on me. That's what I want to do. Yeah, good, good. Thank you. That's what I need because if, if I'm over here going like I'm not on the screen, it's kind of like stupid. Now. Okay, but, but it is zooming out a little bit. But y'all still can see it. That's fine. It'll work. I'll figure it out. But thank you. You're right. It's not exactly what what it was doing before. Okay, so first of all, how many plugs we have? This is pretty cool. You got about five liters of blood. So that's two, two liters, or two and a half, two liters. Okay. Now, I've seen, we're about in this room, we've seen a horror movie, and there's like 400 gallons of blood come out when they shoot somebody here in the movies and stuff. Okay. So we got a little bit of a fantasy world now in my blood. Okay. Now, if you take a blood sample and you centrifuge it, does everybody know what the word centrifuge means? Centrifuge is a tool that we use in the lab to spin something real fast in a test tube. Now, the best way to look at it would be if I took this glass, this test tube of blood, and I spun it, I put a rope around it, and spun it real fast. What that will do is that makes the heavier things go to the bottom of the glass tube, and then the lighter things get stuck up in the, in the, like the column of things. So, so the lightest at the top, and the, uh, the heaviest at the bottom. So, since you're using blood, you end up with, uh, uh, well, this, well, first of all, we'll just do this. If you look at this under a microscope, which we did last semester, and we probably won't do this week because we're gonna cut the we're gonna cut the heart today, right? So if you have lab today, bring your goggles and the goggles. I got gloves. Bring goggles, right? We're gonna cut the heart, and probably not, we're gonna we did we uh, we may look at blood real quick, but we may not. Probably won't have time. But that's why we move the blood pressure thing to do at home, right? Because that's pretty much that was that was the best of the, of the labs we had left that would be good to do virtual. But anyway, this is what it looks like. Y'all remember this, right? We did this, and so the main component here is water, and then these red blood cells, right? And then you have the white blood cells. Here is the eosinophil, a lymphocyte, uh, and a neutrophil, and some platelets. Okay. Now, if you spin it down, you get this. So if you centrifuge it, it pulls it down to where the red blood cells go to the bottom of the other glass, of the, the test tube. And these are called the red blood cells, the erythrocytes. And, and you go to the hospital and have somebody go blood, they do this. They prick your finger and they get your hematocrit count. So your hematocrit, which is your red blood cell components, and what do they do? Carry oxygen to the cell, right? They transport gas, and that's their main purpose, right? That is around 44%. If you were to have your brain pricks and then do a medical count, and that would be 40%, then you would be anemic, right? So, so your normal blood should be 44% hematocrit red blood cells. And then the plasma is the water, and all the things dissolve in water. So, plasma is the water component of blood and things like. Ions, electrolytes, and, and things that have a charge on them that are in solution in the water. Okay. Plasma proteins, small solids. And then there's this little bucket, and that plasma is about 55% of blood. And then there's a little white coat in the middle called a bucket coat, and those are your white blood cells. And they're about 1%. So by volume or by weight, blood is about what 44% red blood cells, 1% white blood cells, and 55% water, and the things dissolved in that. Now, if you read the book, they will use the term formed element. A formed element is anything, any, anything made like a red blood cell, a white blood cell, or a plate that were made by our bone marrow to be in the blood. Okay, everybody cool with that? All right, does that help a little bit? Okay, everybody with me? This is pretty good stuff. But anyway, so that this is what we do. And they always do this before they ever do a thick blood. Like you feel blood over here. When we had the blood drive last week, they got to check your hematocrit. And if you have low red blood cells, then you're said to be anemic. Okay, and we'll talk about that. That's coming up in a minute. Okay, so the three formed elements that we talk about very quickly are red blood cells, the erythrocyte, and, and I apologize, people. Why, why, oh, why do we have to give everything five names? I don't know. I would like to slap some of the, and I'm not a violent person, but I would probably like to verbally slap whoever named some of this stuff. Right? So we got five names for everything, and I think that freaks people out sometimes in AMP. 
red blood cells are erythrocytes, white blood cells are leukocytes, and platelets, uh, they got two or three names, we'll send them in. But they are, platelets are not cells. They are cellular fragments. And that's the biggest important thing to know. So they're actual fragments of the cell, okay? And that, that's kind of weird. I forgot to do my roll here. So I'm going to pass around the C chart, and I'll take about actually where it serves me. I don't have to call your name, and because I'm pronouncing it wrong. Do the sign chart passing around, and I'll, I'll, I'll do that later. Okay? All right, and here's talking about that plasma layer. Okay, that's the same thing we just went over. The different after shift diffusing, you've got that the plasma is 55%. She goes back over all that. I'm moving on. Now, what is the function of blood? I actually think that's the question. What, what is the main purpose of blood? Well, one of the big things it does, it is going to help exchange the gases in the cell. Okay, so long story short or short story long, the main one of the main functions of blood is all these red blood cells go to the lungs and the pulmonary circuit of the heart, right, of the cardiovascular system, and they get oxidized. They collect oxygen in the alveoli. Hey, I'm wearing a, mask, I'm wearing a shield. Y'all got a mask because COVID is screwing up with that membrane where we do this gas exchange, okay? So it's screwing up and not allowing the gases to exchange properly. And we'll get to that later on in a couple of weeks, a couple of months. And so COVID is going to come into real, in our face, right, when we get to the rest of our chapter. But that oxygen goes into the blood, is stored by red blood cells, and then the, ox, the blood also carries carbon dioxide, which is a waste gas that we've got to get rid of, and it also exchanges at the alveoli of the lungs. Okay? So, as a matter of fact, let me see. Let me, let me do something here. If I can get a pen to work real quick, I'm going to probably screw up here. It's probably going to be one of those, like, I wish I hadn't done this after I did it. Okay? But there's, and, and one, of the, one, of the, one of the flaws that I think of in this book, and I like the book a lot, Ammerman book, but she does energy in the digestive chapter coming up in a couple of months. And one of the things that you, if you had me in a regular, the other book, I would have done, drilled you in the mind with this, you would know this equation. Look at this, C6H12O6 is sugar, plus six oxygens is gonna be broken down into six carbon dioxides, six waters, and we make 36 to 38 ATP. So this is the equation for cellular respiration, which is very important. We eat sugar, we can convert sugar into proteins and fats and fats and proteins into sugar. Sugar is the food that the cells like to eat. And we have to have oxygen to release the energy in that sugar molecule. So that is why we have respiratory system, okay? God made blood, carry red blood cells to carry oxygen for that reason. Okay, so the, our cellular engines have to have oxygen and we have to have food. Blood carries the gases and the food too, okay? To the cells, okay? In the process of making this 36, 38 ATPs, we're going to make what? Carbon dioxide. So that is a waste gas that we have to excrete out. Everybody with me? Super important. And I probably already said this before in class because you know, it's just such a big deal. But we will spend a day or two in a regular semester in the chapter on digestion going over how this works. Okay, so all animals and all living organisms on Earth pretty much either do photosynthesis or they eat somebody else and get sugar from them. And photosynthesis makes sugar, right? So actually one of the coolest things I can tell you today is the reverse of this, carbon dioxide water and a, and, a, and a chloroplast and sunlight is photosynthesis and we make sugar and oxygen. So plants release oxygen. So when Elon Musk <laughs> and, and, and uh, SpaceX goes to Mars, either NASA or Mars, we'll get there first and, and, and we'll take some plants and we'll take some Plants to make oxygen, right? And we can sustain life in a, in a biosphere or more, probably underground. Okay. And there are already people plan on doing this, and guess what they're going to do? They're not coming back. It'll be a one way mission. They've already got two or three hundred volunteers to go to Mars and die on Mars and be the first Martians to set up to bring people on out to Mars later. Okay. That's pretty cool. So, but it comes back to biology and AP. You got to have what? Food, oxygen. And you got to get rid of carbon dioxide, which happens to be needed by plants to build the sugar. So the circle of life involves plants and animals coexisting and helping each other. What we need, they make. What we make, they need. Although they make both, so they don't need us. We need them. That's important. Other things is all ions, nutrients, hormones, waste, and then waste products. Cells have waste, and so the cardiovascular system helps get rid of what? Waste products and even their products that they make. Because some cells have jobs to make products, right? So this. Cardiovascular system is super important in distributing everything needs to be done. And also the immune defend, defenders of the body, the leukocytes, the white blood cells are in the blood because the blood goes to every cell in the body and they are 
stormtroopers, our police department, our first responders, and there are our army. Okay, so super important stuff. Help maintain body temperature. Uh, plays a big role. We're gonna get. I'm not gonna get this today, but it does a big role in blood clotting, coagulation. Okay, and so there are chemicals in the blood that so anytime blood touches anything other than simple stem, simple serum, it coagulates. Okay, and we'll talk about that later. So coagulation and stopping the blood loss is also in the blood. Help maintain acid balance base, and of course, super big one here for me: stabilizes blood pressure. Right, high blood pressure can be alleviated by what? Urinating, right? By the release, open the valve and then lower the amount of blood, or slow the heart rate down so you don't beat as many times. So it helps control blood pressure. Okay, plasma is the liquid part of it. It's, it's ninety percent water, so the main thing in plasma is water. Has kind of a yellow look to it. And the main things in it are plasma proteins made by the liver. Now, why would we have these plasma proteins called albumin? Okay, now see if you have to remember this. This is a little bit hard to understand because you don't have to apply something we learned last semester. I don't like doing that because that makes me think. Remember that I talked about osmosis? Osmosis is a big deal, right? If you drink pure water, then you dilute your blood and all your cells will swell up. Okay, if you get dehydrated playing basketball and don't take Gatorade, don't drink liquid, then you get your blood gets concentrated and that sucks the water out of your brain cells, out of your cells in your body, and then you go into, into shock and die. So we got to maintain this online pressure of blood or it could be dangerous to the cells. The plasma proteins called albumin made by the liver help maintain online pressure. So they are, these are proteins put in the blood to keep it from getting too hypertonic or hypotonic to keep from swelling or sucking the blood out of cells or blowing water into cells and blowing up. So albumin has a big role and the main one is these colloid osmotic pressure by these albumins made by the liver to maintain osmosis. We also see immune proteins called gamma globulins, also the super rope called antibodies. But guys, one of the worst things I hate about this, once again, I'm going to apologize. Antibodies are little Y-shaped molecular structures that have two binding sites, here and here, to bind to a foreign substance we call an antigen. These antibodies are very cool. Do not confuse antibodies with antibiotics. These are two different things. Antibiotics are pills we take like penicillin to kill bacteria. Antibodies are little Y-shaped molecular structures made by the B cell, of, which is a type of the lymphocyte. And there are millions of these in your blood, and there with these little Y stick to foreign particles like HIV or you know Robin Dukakis bacterium that you picked up last night, right? And they mark them to be eaten by those monocytes and neutral cells. So these things mainly mark things to be destroyed by other immune cells. We're going to talk a lot about that. Guess, and just in case you just find that very confusing and don't like it, guess what the next chapter of the book is? Immune that. So, so what I'm setting up today, and then in, in the conclusion of this lecture that I have up on Friday, you need to watch, or you, our next week's going to be completely like me talking in Spanish or something, or like Greek. Okay. So these two really go together, right? Because the cells that do immunity are the what? The blood cells. Yeah, the white blood cells. Yeah, the lymphocytes and then the, the neutrophil, the eosinophil, the eosinophil, the eosinophil, the lymphocytes. But a specific lymphocyte makes these antibodies called the B cell. Okay, we'll talk more about that. Uh, there are also transport proteins and see in the plasma to carry lipids because lipids don't mix real good with water, right? So there are proteins to carry them. And of course, there are clotting factors made by the liver that cause blood to coagulate. And also, we have the, the, uh, the help with platelets. The platelets are a single fragment that stops, really, platelets do help stop that first blood clot. So when you touch yourself, they, they cause what we call the platelet plug, and they're the first thing to stop the bleeding. Okay? Kind of like when you cut yourself shaving and you put some toilet paper on there to stop the bleeding, that, 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 that fiber in the toilet paper helps the clot. That's what platelets do. They help clot and stop the blood loss. Okay? All right. Uh, uh, let's walk through the plasma bind consists of several small molecules, blah, 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 blah. Okay? All of this is going to be exchanged at the capillary bed. Here is a nice table that I probably just went through. That's everything in the plasma. It's kind of bad the way they drew it. Let me, let me kind of break it down a little bit better. Because this kind of confused me yesterday the other day I was practicing, preparing for class. 9% water, the largest component other than water are the plasma proteins that make up 9% of the plasma volume, right? So it's 90% what? Water and 9% plasma protein. That's 99% of it, just the first two things, okay? Those happen to include immune proteins, uh, albumins, transport proteins, clotting factors, and other solutes. And then 
that less the rest of the one percent is starting right here with the other solute is one percent so it's really 90 percent water nine percent these right here very should have drew a line right there right let me do that okay here you go look look very badly done here table does that help a little bit it really confused me right there's three things right water 90 percent plasma protein so these things are what nine and then one percent is the rest of it bad drawing table okay <laughs> anyway so look at that glucose which are nutrients ions that we know cells need and then and then here's the tricky part dissolved gases small amount of oxygen and carbon dioxide and then waste products cellular waste products my right, guys listen to what i'm going to say it's a little important because setting up multiple chapters coming one of the hardest things for me to understand as a student is what I'm going to say. So I think on the videos I need to tell you the hard things and y'all can read the rest of that. What I'm going to show you in a minute, I'm going to somebody give me a cue when I got like 10 minutes left. I'm going to skip over to something really hard I want to show you. And then I'll probably go over it again on the second video and go with this. This might be a two-part video, you know, for this chapter. But what we're going to see in this chapter, and, and it's a short answer question, it's a big one here. Look, explain the capillary exchange. I know it's in here. I better put it in here. Oh my gosh, I didn't put it over here. I screwed up. We'll have to write in here for this. Okay, it's on 18. Okay, so it's back there. We already looked at it. I already looked at it. Okay, okay. When we looked at that capillary exchange, and I did that on video today, listen, guys, that is not talking about gases. That's only talking about stuff dissolved in the water. And I probably said that in the video, which means some of y'all looked at it. I'm going to cry, but that's good. Okay. We will talk about gases in the chapter on respiratory. Okay. Are you with me? But here's the punchline. It's not very clear. Water don't like gases. Water don't like gases. They do not dissolve very well at all. Okay? And that's a big deal. So God made red blood cells that do bind with white oxygen, right? And that's why we have red blood cells. So they have oxygen holds that. The red blood cells hold that oxygen and release it at the cells where it's needed. But water do not like gases. Okay? Now, if you read this real carefully, we'll see later on. That which gas does red blood cells like best? Oxygen. Actually, yeah. Now, are they like oxygen, but it's carbon monoxide better, CO. Matter of fact, it has a 200 times greater ability for CO. So if you're around a house last week, the snowstorm it was five degrees. Anybody turn on propane tank anywhere? For heat? I turn on natural gas. I have a little natural gas, you know, fake, fake fire, 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 you know, uh, you know, you know, you know, you know. What I'm trying to think of here, a uh, fireplace in my house, right? But it produces carbon monoxide. If you breathe carbon monoxide, it binds the inflow and it kills you. So you got to have ventilation in a house with a propane tank. People die every year and they're hunting their deer hunting cat, you know, little deer hunting, you know, little, uh, they build like a little hunt shed, right? And they'll line a propane tank in there with a heater. And if you don't open windows, you die. Because hemoglobin will bind to the carbon monoxide and, and cut your care, oxygen carrying capacity. But just note that they do note that there's small amounts of dissolved gases in the water. And we'll talk about that later. That's a big deal. And that and so when we looked at that last chapter, we talked about capillary exchange. Don't confuse gas gases. Those those pressures have no effect on gas. That was the osmotic pressures we looked at in that video that I shot today. Okay. Can I can be this reading? Okay. Uh, now why they chuck this in here, I don't know. Okay, it's kind of weird when you throw right here. But they did, they just jumped right here and put this is one of those little fun things. But sclerosis of the liver is when you usually caused by alcohol poisoning. You kill your liver, and one of the first things that happens is the uh, you quit making these plasma, the plasma proteins, right? The albumin, and then your alpha pressure gets out of whack. So sclerosis of the liver is caused by cancer, alcoholism, or hepatitis. That was the number one killer of nurses back in the 70s. So hepatitis is a virus that we did not know, and people used to be real nonchalant with needles. We used to wash and reuse needles all the time. And the first, first, first big thing that happened in the 70s was hepatitis, and that's when they started going to individual needles every time they get a shot. And of course, AIDS is transmitted with blood, and now we're like, you know, we're they come face suits and we do shots, right? And then they got the little boxes at every door, right? I got a needle, my needle. It's clear, you know. So they, they said they break the needle and put it in that box. They didn't need to go back to normal because we know that, that, that hepatitis viruses can be transmitted by needles as an HIV. That kills a little, like 10 leading cause of death in America for men, 12 to women. So this is a big deal. First the problem is you lose plasma proteins of the liver die. And then you get declined clotting factors. So you can't coagulate your blood. Okay. And, those, and then eventually you die of liver failure. 
Uh, matter of fact, if you have a friend, and this is the way you can see this, if their whites of eyes are turning green or brown, if the whites of eyes look like they're turning yellow, get some life insurance quick. Because <laughs> that's the sign of the blue ribbon building up in their blood, and uh, the whites of the eye turning yellow is a sign of liver failure. Okay, now I'm going to blow through the next part here real quick. The retrocyte function here. You know, and here they are, beautiful red blood cells. Here's the 4200 power. Okay. Look at that. Each red blood cell contains a billion octobinding hemoglobin molecules. That just blows my mind. Okay. So billion hemoglobin molecules in each of these, they can hold they can hold on to four different oxygen molecules. The red blood cell is 7.5 millimeters wide, 2.5 well, seven five long, two and a half wide. Looks like an inner tube to me, right? That you put behind the steam boat to pull, right? And they are the perfect diameter, they're the same diameter of the capillary beds of your body. So the smallest capillary of your body is just a little smaller than that. So they squeeze through those capillary beds, and when they get old and, and, and don't and lose their elasticity, then the liver breaks them down and, the, and uh, knocks them down and destroys them, which is one of my questions about the fate of a red blood cell in a minute. The hemoglobin molecule has an iron, a heme group with four iron molecules in it. Each of those can carry an oxygen, right? And so when they get oxidized, it turns bright red. That's why blood is red. Uh, it releases oxygen in areas of the body that have low oxygen levels, and it can also carry uh, carbon dioxide. Matter of fact, uh, this FYI, this is a question that's going to come up in the chapter on respiratory. 98% of oxygen is carried by red blood cells. Okay, 2% is like dissolved in the water, dissolved gas. Look at this. Carbon dioxide, 23%. Oops, dyslexia. Sorry. Is carried by red blood cells. This is a big deal. So red blood cells carry 23% of carbon dioxide, and I believe it's something like 70%. And there's another one there, like 14% is a dissolved gas. So we, we actually make a compound called bicarbonate, and that's the main way we carry carbon dioxide. And we'll get to that later. But it does, the red blood cells carry 23% of the carbon dioxide from the cell back to the lung. <coughs> that's cool. Okay, keep it on. Uh, there it is. Carbon dioxide is very dangerous because it has a 200 times greater affinity for red blood cells. And so you got to be very careful that you don't get this. Most of our fire detectors now, you buy smoke detectors, are also carbon dioxide detectors. So when you go buy one of them, when y'all get an apartment, and I would tell you, I don't know if you don't have one, a lot of times fire department gives to you. But this is one of those places that we don't want to skimp, right? You know, if you want to buy the cheap salt instead of the, the good, the higher salt at Walmart, it's too. But buy a good fire detector that's a carbon dioxide detector. So that if your propane don't work right or whatever in your house, then it'll start leaking. Okay. And say you to get out of the house. I actually had that happen. I actually put propane in my first house there in Sentovia. And it turned first cold night, I turned it on. And then about one o'clock in the morning, the fire alarm went off. I looked there where I couldn't find the fire anywhere. I looked out that propane tank and it was not burning bright blue. It was, it was popping, it was red. I opened the windows and the alarm went off. So we were producing carbon dioxide in my house. I just cut it off, got the blankets out, had my Gas provider come and clean it out. So he blew out, had the head of had a dirt dropper, got up in there. So dirt divers will get in there and mess up the, the blend of air and cause it. You want that nice blue blade going. Okay, there's the hemoglobin structure. Okay, life cycle, they live 120 days. Once they can no longer squeeze through the capillary bed, they, they, they look, they have no, they look. The red blood cells are totally committed to carrying oxygen. They throw their nucleus out so they can't reproduce. So in their development, they chunk the nucleus out and then they run through your body for 120 days carrying oxygen and carbon dioxide. Okay, and we'll see what happens to them when they die. Uh, the production of blood is called hemopoiesis, right? And we have, and the production of red blood cells is erythropoiesis. Now, if you remember in the endocrine chapter, erythropoiesin is the hormone made by the kidney that goes to the bone marrow and triggers red blood cells to be made. So as people have liver failure, we do have a drug now we can give them erythropoiesin. There it is to increase blood production. Erythropoiesis takes about five to seven days. And here's what happens the hemopoietic stem cell divides into erythrocytes to become pro erythrocytes. And then they chunk their nucleus out, look at that, and become reticular sites. And then they become the mature erythrocytes. So they actually throw their nucleus out so they cannot divide and reproduce again. And all they do is carry oxygen for 120 days. Then look what happens. Uh, if the blood levels get low, then the kidney is detects that and produces the hormone of erythropoiesin that goes back to bone marrow to increase red blood cell production. Negative feedback mechanism there with the kidneys making the hormone to make more red blood cells. Okay, 
Uh, and then the spleen had, and the sinusoid and in the liver, there are macrophages that will break down the old red blood cell. And the heme group then is converted into a chemical called biliburnin, which is a green pigment that then goes and it's then filtered out by the liver and it's converted into its cousin called bilirubin. So we have a green pigment, biliburnin, and a yellow pigment called bilirubin that are, that are taken out of the blood by the liver. And so here's what a cool thing I did. The liver's got to get rid of that bilirubin and burn it, and it does not have a shoot to the outside. But the liver does make one compound that's used in digestion called bile. Bile breaks down fat. Bile is like dial, dog detergent or the detergent you got by your sink is because it gets grease off. So bile has the bilirubin and bilirubin sold in it. And this is why bile is green. Y'all all know bile is green. Right? We look at the call about every script, every call about every agency book ever written, it's green. So bile is green because of the Billy Boone and Billy Burnham being this is the way to get out of the body. Now, what bile this is really cool. If it squirts down in the small intestine, this is why poo poo is green and yellow. This is what gives poo poo its color because it eventually comes out of the poo poo and is more from God and display. Is that not the most great thing ever? I'm telling you right now that a compound that we make as we break down our red blood cells called what? The heme group of hemoglobin. It's broken down into bilirubin and bilirubin that is put into the liver. The bile is collected by the, the excuse me, the bilirubin and bilirubin are collected by the liver. It's put in the bile, and the bile then goes to the small intestine. This chemical used to break down fat carries these bilirubin and bilirubin pigments that then are excreted out of the body with our PC. That's the color of poo poo. You may go home and tell your parents today you can learn why poo poo is the color of that. Do not do that. Okay. But that's some that's some good trivia, right? But it's a way for the liver to get rid of what? The compound called what? Billy Rubin and Billy Burnham that it needs to get rid of. Notice the iron and the other things are recycled back to the red blood cell. Here we got a picture showing this. Transparent carries that back. So here is the spleen breaking down old red blood cells. Look, the hemoglobin, heme, Billy Rubin, Billy Burnham, liver in the porcelain gut. That's a toilet seat in the commode, right? Eventually, that's how it gets out. The iron is recirculated back to bone marrow to make more bone marrow, and the proteins are used also by the body for energy or whatever. So the body's always about recycling. But that pain group has to be got rid of it. It's, it's not recycling. And that's where Billy Rubin and Billy Vernon come from. Uh, I'll catch my breath. What do you think? That's pretty cool. Now you'll never forget that because I think it's this ultimate conclusion, right? That that will stick in your mind. What is the ultimate phase of this, right? In our PC. Okay. Uh, that's one of your questions answers, I believe. We'll move on. Anemia. How many of y'all heard of anemia? Right? And I hate that the, the Bubba, the Mississippi, now Bubba is my general Mississippi redneck or person of not very much schooling. I'm sorry, so forgive me, but it's my Bubba. Okay, but I love it when I ask somebody like, oh, Sister Sue's got anemia. She got low blood. Like, what the crap, low blood? Don't use that. That's the wrong way. Nobody's got like, the river's like, high blood, low blood. Okay, no. Anemia means low oxygen carrying factor, okay? And that could be what? Something's wrong with you, so you're not making red blood cells, right? Or you could be bleeding, right? Or whatever. So anemia means low oxygen carrying capacity of the cells. That's the key, key okay? Now there's several types, we'll look at it, but uh, a, lot of, a lot of small, thin people can get anemic, right? Uh, they have a pale look, fatigue, weakness, shortness of breath. Uh, many times they're not making enough erythral free food, right? Okay, so a lot of things can cause it, but it's, it's usually caused by decreased hemoglobin. Uh, one of the more common problems in young girls is iron deficiency, right? Both my daughters try to give blood and they're kind of small and they go do the blood service thing. They're like, you're anemic, we can't take you today. So we just take, finally, my oldest is 28, I think like five years ago, she went out of state and you know, went to give blood for the first time. But she always tried to give blood and they wouldn't take her because she was always had with a little bit of anemic, okay? All right, so, we, so the heme, uh, iron deficiency is very common. Uh, cancers, I know that that's so if you're anemic, that's another sign of cancer. Uh, real quick, we went here. My dad, who is still alive, he's 77, so about 20 years ago, he was 57. And my mother was having a knee replacement, and they and she is scared to death to get AIDS, right? The blood, the blood product. So, 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 Baptist would actually let you go give your own blood and they'd use your blood for surgery. They can just store it up because you know, it's not elective surgery. So, she goes up here to the blood service in DeSoto because she's having her surgery in Memphis. And they can't take her, they can't hit her vein, and they just can't hit her vein. And my mother's veins are hard to find. Oh, man, we can't get you. We're sorry, we can't, we can't take your blood. 
you got to use, you know, somebody else says, well, my dad and mom were both old, so dad said, I'll let her have my blood. Well, they see my dad draw his blood, he did, it, and it's so anemic that the nurse from the former student of mine, that she told him, Mr. Robinson, something's wrong with you. So I happen to be at Northwest right here post, and so I actually called me, and so I was able to sneak off and run up there and get blood, and so my mother made me feel good. She, she don't like riding with me, she don't like my driver, but she took my blood. Doesn't want bad driver. Okay, but anyway, I don't know about that. But anyway, so I get up there and the former student was to me one of y'all. This is right. Hey, Rob, look, look, I love you. Your dad's wrong. Your dad is bleeding somewhere. He is anemic or he has cancer. I think he has cancer because he says he's not bleeding anywhere. There's no blood in his tissue. You know. We end up going to the doctor the next day, taking a fecal, a poo poo sample. And my doctor looked at it and said, Oh, it's normal. Since the lab is full of, of de de decomposed blood, he had stage three colon cancer. And it was bleeding in his colon of high that was coming out of the poop and it wasn't normal. And so they removed the tumor by like a, a grapefruit out of him. Uh, he had to do a year of chemotherapy and uh, and he's been cancer free for 22 years. Uh, pretty sure that if he had not given my mother blood, he would have done very He would have died of it. Because it's already spread to his mother and they took it out. Which is stage three. So a random act of kindness on his part to help his wife and give her blood. Which he didn't get to save his life. But that's a sign of what? Anemia can be a sign of other problems. And there's a good one that hits close to home there with cancer. Also, other things like lead poisoning, malnutrition, poisoning. You know, your wife trying to kill you, your husband trying to kill you. Okay, no more. Don't really get a smile out of y'all. Okay, all right, moving on. So, other problems and things that can cause uh, anemia, blood loss, uh, uh, vitamin B12 deficiencies, right? And of course, all types of cancers, right? Moving on. Uh, one, another one here we mentioned here, sickle cell anemia. Let's just hit this out here real quick. It's a wild one here because this can cause uh, anemia because it's limiting your oxygen carrying capacity. These cells can't get through the capillary bed because they're not the normal size. Okay. Now, this is a genetic disease that is lower common in people of African descent because in Africa, if you have sickle cell trait, which means you're carrying for this, then the, red, the, the, the parasite that causes malaria can't live in your red blood cell. So the parasite that causes malaria, the protozoan, lives in the red blood cell. It can't live in this one. So these people have some defense against this disease. We think sickle cell, we think sickle cell anemia evolved in Africa to give these people a better chance of surviving this terrible disease, which still affects 40% of some people in the country and 40% and, and of people in some African nations are carriers to this. So interesting genetics on this. Let me show you this. These are your chromosomes. If you have full cell, full sickle cell, you have two. Of the sickle cell gene, what is called sickle with SD. These people have a rough life. I had one girl who I taught in my EMP class, and she was very thin, very small, and told me that she spent probably two years of her 18 years in the hospital already. And she needs a bone marrow transplant. That's the only cure for it right now. People who have carriers have one gene and one normal gene, and they usually don't have problems, but they might have trouble doing like endurance running and stuff like that because they do have it, does affect their oxygen carry capacity. Everybody else here would be two normal genes, okay? Now, for a, 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 a just throw the numbers out here, probably I think it's somewhere around 25% of people who are African American, I say that, or have an African American grandparent or something, about one in four are carriers for this, okay? So, what would be very bad is if this person was a carrier, because you know you got this because you'll be sick. But if two of these people, right, that are carriers, one normal and one sickle cell, if they get married, then one out of four kids have this disease, and that's really bad. And we need to make sure everybody understands that, right? And I always said this right here if I was a carrier, my wife was a carrier, and we and they bad genetics in the Robinson family, and they bad genetics in my wife's family, then I'd just go maybe to adopt some kid and, be, and bring some new genes into the gene pool. The Robinson gene pool wouldn't hurt to have a fresh injection of genes, right? Okay. But I'm just saying that, I mean, but that's the deal. You wouldn't think I would consider not having a kid if I were. Uh, married to the care two carriers married, in my opinion, but it's up to you. It's your, your opinion. You see how it does. And she said she woke up with headaches all the time because you have blood storage through your brain. So because it gets clogged up in the capillary bed. Pretty wild. Okay, the wild blood cells. Okay, now we talked about these right now. I'll back up a little bit and talk a little slower here on this, and, but just check this out. Now, if you remember, I made a big deal in the out there. Seven things we look at in blood about right? five wild blood cells and what? Red blood cells and platelets, right? The red blood cells, the white, the white blood cells are called leukocytes. And right off the bat, 
three of them have granules in them that are little vesicles that contain, contain chemicals, and they're said to be the granocyte. And then there are two that don't have the little sacs in their cytoplasm, so they are said to be a granocyte. Remember, because a in front of something means not the false X word. That Robin is not a cute, a tall, and, and a thin, and, and a doesn't talk at all. Okay, all that would be not true, but I thought the opposite of that. So granocytes then are the, uh, the ones who have these uh, crystals in their, in their cytoplasm. Okay, check it out. So the granocytes have the crystals in them, and they're the neutrophils, the eosinophils, and basophils. Okay. Now I'm going to skip on to the picture of it. We because you know, that's a good, good table in our book, in the lab book. But remember, neutrophils eat bacteria, so they're the main phagocytic cell in our body. But they do have the grains in their cytoplasm. They look clear. The eosinophils had the red in. Remember, they had the red crystals, and they had the biconcave uh, nucleus that looked like a weightlifter with the, with the, with the dumbbells bending a little bit. Remember. Okay, they are big in parasitic worm infections and allergic reactions. So their, their chemicals and their granulocytes are enzymes and toxins to kill parasites and they mediate inflammation. So if you have allergy problems, your eosinophils aren't working right. And the basophils have those dark purple granulocytes in them and they release histamine and heparin. Histamine causes inflammation. Heparin makes you bleed when you cut yourself. So the idea is to bleed a little bit to clean the wound out. There's a neutrophil with a multi three to five low nucleus, right? There's that dumbbell look in the eosinophil, and then the basal fields, you can't even see their nucleus because it's in there, maybe an S shape, but, it, but they have so many purple granulocytes in them and they, have, they, they spew it. Now they look like they're blowing out too, right? So some of our pictures show these guys spewing out. So those are the three granulocytes and the, the, and the A granulocytes are the lymphocytes and the monocytes. Now, remember, the, the lymphocyte is going to be broken into two groups, the B and T cells, right? And this is your specific immunity that we're going to talk about in the next chapter. So in our defense mechanism, we have general defense, which are the neutrophils, right? And all the little things, we got skin and barriers defense. So when, they, when that fails, then these are the stormtroopers that come in. These are the, the, the elite killers that come in, and these guys have memory. So when they buy a battle or something, they will make memory cells to remember it the next time so we can kick his butt quicker. The, the word antigen needs to be remembered here because antigen is anything, any chemical or any marker on a cell that would trigger the lymphocytes to attack it. So, so this, to give you a reference to this, y'all heard of somebody getting an organ transplant and they got to find a match? That means they found somebody that has these antigen markers on their cells that are so similar to yours that maybe I Melissa to have my kidney and her body would not recognize that it's not been hers. So we're looking for matches in these markers to show people that have similar markers. Okay, and that's a good example of that. So lymphocytes are super big, including B cells that make those antibodies, make the antibodies, and then T cells do what are called cellular immunity, and they kill cells gone bad. And they also modulate the whole thing. The heifer T cell is the main cell that controls the entire immune attack, and that is the target of HIV. So AIDS knocks out your immune system. B cells make antibodies, there we go. T cells do cellular immunity and make heifer T cells, but they do not, this is a good point here, look, T cells do not produce antibodies. Only the B cells make antibodies, okay? Okay, and then we got the monocyte, which I call him showing his big boy, that's the biggest punch on the line. He has a great big C-shaped or bean-shaped nucleus, and he is a huge phagocytic cell that likes to eat dead or dying cells or bacteria or anything debris. So this is the big eater. Also, we're going to see later on, this is a good point here, that he plays a big role in activating uh, 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 T cells by presenting the antigen, being an antigen disease. So this time. We got about 10 minutes to go. Actually, I was, that was on the last chapter. I thought it was in this chapter. So I actually got confused there. Yeah, because I wanted to go over that diffusion. I already did that. Okay. So thank you, though. Thank you. Yeah, because I, I, I think that shit, that's really got to do with blood, too. So my mind was, I got to get to that. Now, really, I mean, we're in pretty good shape here. I just need to finish this, this before. So thank you. Okay. So yeah, so macrophages, right, are, is another name for the monocyte. And I apologize for two names, right? And here's a picture of these guys. Remember? Lymphocytes are small, and that's not very good because you don't see it smaller than this guy. Remember, my, our pictures in the lab book are actually better because you got them all. I've got, got one picture in the lab book that has everything, but I think a basal fill in. We get a signal. I got like five or four of the seven in one picture. Okay, anybody, anybody have any questions on blood on that part of blood? 
Okay, they now have machines. Now, back in the old days, we would print your finger and we had microscope slides that had grids on it. We would count the cells and, and do mathematics to calculate how many white blood cells you got. Now they have machines that do this randomly, not do automatically. They just print your finger, put it in a machine, and I actually went to the doctor during spring Christmas and they print my finger and my white blood cells were fine. I knew we knew in 15 minutes, it all came out. Because I've been having high blood pressure. Uh, probably because uh, this this last year probably put me in the hospital. Right? Anyway, I got on blood pressure medicine because I have genetic. I just had high blood pressure from my probably inherited from my mother and probably were doing it too. But anyway, but that automatically I do that and give you the, the entire uh, CBC complete blood count of every every blood cell. How many you got including platelets? Uh, leukopoiesis is a process in which bone marrow makes more of that, right? So we have the hormones and chemicals made by the immune system to trigger that. Uh, here is a picture showing the development of all that. That's a very true picture. We have actually grown these in the laboratory now. Look, guys. So we have we are growing these hemocytic stem cells, and the, I think one day we'll make synthetic blood this way. We should be able theoretically. They think we might be able to put this in a cow and milk, milk and have a few cows raised on the dairy farm. We have very cows and give old blood. Okay, so it's very important. Y'all know we have blood surges all the time. I ask people blood. We need to be able to make a synthetic blood. Here are here's what we would have to have in it because the plasma is easily made, but these defectors are not all easily made. So there we are. Look, neutrophil, eosinophil, basophil, the three granulocytes, and then monocytes, and then look, the lymphocytes broken into the T cells that do cellular immunity and B cells that do humoral immunity, making those antibodies. And we can't tell the difference in the microscope, at least I didn't make y'all. So there's been the, the monocytes, for, excuse me, the uh, lymphocyte being either a B or T cell, but you need to know that now. Because that's the next chapter we're going to talk about is the immune system. Okay, leukemia is overproduction of one of the blood cells. So all blood cancer is is one of these blood cells being made too much, right? That's pretty wild. So you can have a uh, uh, monocytic leukemia, a lymphocytic leukemia. You can have an eosinophilic. Any of those can be acute lymphocytic. would mean too many lymphocytes being made, right? And it, and because blood goes in every part of the body, blood cancers can be easily spread all over the body much quicker, right? That's why St. Jude has done great research up here. We have 10 or 15 blood cancers that probably had a 70 to 80 death rate in the 60s and now have been cured or, or manageable today, right? Pretty cool. So anyway, so leukemia is just is, is a, one of them going wrong. Wow. Okay, playlist then are these small saber fragments made by this megakaryocyte cell. We'll see it here. So here it is, here it is, here is the big cell that makes them. That actually gives me a playlist. So it pinches off, and these are cellular fragments that have mitochondria and have these chemicals for coagulation. The megakaryoblast is the cell that makes those, okay, develops in this megakaryocyte that then breaks apart into these uh, platelets, okay? They're involved in thrombopoiesis, which is the production of the chemicals that triggers coagulation, okay? So they do make some of these, and here it is. So here's the monocyte, so excuse me, the Myeloid cell line makes the megakaryocyte, there it is, and it produces these platelets. Now, like I said, platelets confuse a lot of people. They are going to cause the platelet flow, which is going to be the first thing we got to stop when we have blood loss. So here's the other side of the picture with the platelets and red blood cells. And I think this is going to be a good little place to stop right here because we can talk about, yeah, I don't like much, but we got to stop talking about how we stop blood loss. Okay, we'll stop there. And I will try to make, I'll just shoot the rest of that video. Okay, y'all can get on out of here. Y'all have a good day. Did that make a little sense today?